So you've had a lot of experience in Washington in the Treasury Department as well as here on Wall Street. First of all, explain what you think Jay Powell means when he says it's unsustainable. <laughs> well, as, as Herb Stein once said, when something's unsustainable, it actually stops. Uh, but uh, I know what I think when I hear that term. I'm not sure exactly what he means, but I, as a person who's spent so much time in and around markets, I think that it's just a matter of time before global financial markets turn their attention to this very poor fiscal trajectory in the United States and reject it. And absent, unless we change course fiscally uh, on our own, voluntarily, before that moment, there'll be a crisis. Um, and it'll only be, many would argue, it'll only be a crisis that will cause the authorities to adjust fiscal policy, for example, additional revenue. Uh, so that's what I think of when I hear the term unsustainable as it relates to the deficit. There will come a moment of reckoning when financial markets reject this course, will have a crisis, uh, and that will force the hands of the Congress and the executive branch in terms of changing policy. That's not a good way to do it. I hope we don't do it that way. It would be much better to, uh, in effect, agree that we need a different path and proactively choose one. But at the moment, you have to be a real optimist to think it's gonna, that's going to be the way it happens. We like to think of markets as anticipating the future to some extent and discounting it and really taking into account. Are the markets not discounting at all right now? Or is that perhaps part of the reason we're seeing, for example, the yield on the 30-year, for example, go up? Is it because of some beginning of concern about repayment of all that debt? It's hard to say. I would not say that right this moment, fiscal concerns are one of the top two or three factors driving markets. Uh, whether they're affecting the 30-year, debatable. Um, there recently been a couple of very sloppy treasury auctions, although they were shorter maturity auctions than that. And that's always a, a, a sign of concern. And keep in mind, we're, we're at a moment, uh, we have this very poor fiscal trajectory at a moment of quantitative tightening. So the Fed has gone from buying billions of dollars of Treasury and government-backed securities during the quantitative easing period, which lasted a very long time, to now selling down aggressively its bond, its bond portfolio. And what that means is it's, um, it's adding to the supply, in effect, of Treasuries that the market has to absorb, because the Fed is a seller, and then you have the Treasury itself issuing giant amounts of new securities. That's adding to the complexity. So you mentioned there are better ways that you would prefer than actually going up to a crisis. Over the course of the summer, we had Hank Paulson, the former Treasury Secretary, on. And he said, actually, when you deal with these issues, you're better off dealing with them earlier rather than later, because the choices get harder as they go on. From your experience in Washington, because you did serve under President Clinton, and that's the last time we sort of got our arms around the deficits, I recall. What are the ways that we might choose right now if we wanted to? For example, the new Speaker of the House, Mike Jordan, says maybe we have a bipartisan commission. Well, uh, there have been a variety of commissions over the years, uh, uh, including uh, Simpson Bowles, of course, famously, um, and they haven't gotten very far. Uh, and you'd have to be uh, really optimistic to think this one would, too, no matter how it's set up. Um, Pank, of course, is right. We're much better off uh, uh, grappling with this voluntarily than having a crisis and having changes, in effect, forced on Washington by the markets, but uh, we're just not on a path right now to do that. I mean, the heart of the matter, and certain people would disagree with this, but I think the heart of the matter is, is, the, uh, is revenues, mm -hmm. and the revenue share of GDP is just much lower than traditionally it used to be. Now, it's been much lower for a few years, but, you know, when I was serving in government, the revenue share of GDP was around 20 percent, sometimes a little higher. Uh, and uh, today it's in the 17 percent range. And y y you, you can't solve this problem without additional revenue. Yes, there should be a role for spending restraint, too. I agree with that. But if, if you don't find a way to add revenue, you're not going to solve this. And right now, as you well know, the politics of anything whatsoever having to do with, with tax increases, no matter who they might fall on, are toxic.